risk. You could lose that amount of money because your profit mirrors your losses. Okay. So always keep that in mind. And that's why you have to learn about risk management and using risk management tools like stop losses. So if the market does turn against you, you don't get, you don't lose a lot of money. So let's start talking about trading the trends. Now, trends are a very, very important part of the market. It sounds like it's simple. A trend is something that's either moving up or something, not, you know, one way or another. It could be colors. I mean, we can see a trend in car sales in red and a decline, a down set, downtrend in black car sales. So a dealer, a, a manufacturer might say, okay, you know what, we're gonna increase the production on red cars and decrease the production on black cars. Or we might phase out the black, or maybe we should do, you know, bring in another color. Maybe women's shoes, the heels are getting higher, the heels are getting lower. These are trends. Trends happen in everything. But trends in trading are very important. Now, when you say there's a trend in, you know, women's heels, well, that's, you know, you see that in a fashion magazine. But trends in trading aren't as simplistic as that. Yes, something's moving up or something's moving down. But we have to be able to define that trend or what we consider a trend because we don't have enough time to see that there's more red cars or more black cars. We're looking at a short-term trading incident. So an uptrend or a downtrend. Now, keep in mind, the market can only do three things. It can go in an uptrend. It can move in a downtrend or it can move in a sideways congested fashion or what we might call a sideways trend. The fact is most of the time, the markets are a mess. Uh oh, just trying to bring up a chart here for you. Most of the time, we think the markets are clean and nice like that. But most of the time, what we're looking at on a real live chart is a mess. The markets are completely random. Anybody who tells you they're not is crazy. Markets are made up of millions of human beings doing millions of human things. And assets move all over the place. Now, there are certain times when the markets exhibit what we call non-random behavior. This non-random behavior actually can be defined as a trend because that's exactly what a trend is. It is non-randomness. Now, remember, we have uptrends and downtrends. We're gonna be using just for example, the uptrend. An uptrend consists of push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. And each one of these pushes and ease makes what we call higher highs and higher lows. That means the current low is higher than the previous low. The next high point before it turns down is higher than the previous wave. And each one of these waves pushes higher and higher while the lows keep staying higher than the previous lows. And this gives us an uptrend. A downtrend is just the reverse. It's lower lows, lower highs, lower highs, higher, lower lows. And it's a series of waves. And this start, this can be explained in a very simplistic manner. Say, I get up this morning and I see my charts and I see a price of an asset. So I say a price of X, Y, and Z companies moving up pretty steadily. At some point I say, look at that, it's moving up. I'm gonna jump in and buy those shares now. Okay. As those shares move up and up and up, other buyers are jumping into the markets. Some point, and we don't know what it is, those buyers that were jumping in, jumped in. The other buyers, or on the sideline and say, yeah, that price got a little bit too high already this morning. And they sit on the sideline. Now, while the sell orders from these guys who got in back here 
are being generated because they already made their profit, they're fine. Because most professional traders don't let trades run. They set a target price, they set an entry point, an exit price. They've made their money. They're happy. As those sell orders are being generated, the market eases back down because it's got to fill all those sell orders or those, let's call get out of the market orders. All of a sudden, at a certain price, those buyers that were sidelined before start re-entering the market and putting pushing that market back up. Okay, the guys who sold before took their profits. Say, ah, you know what's a good time to get back in there. They're getting back in, and the market will move back up. Now, remember, once a trend starts. Now, a trend is not just an upward movement. Okay, because you can have a completely random upward movement. But you couldn't have made any money in this random movement because it was all over the place. I mean, sure, you could have guessed at something. But there was nothing that you could have made an intelligent trading choice doing. But when we start getting the randomness coming out of the market and we start to see a pattern developing known as a trend and it starts exhibiting these or fitting these rules and believe me this happens all the time and i'll show you on charts show you online it happens all the time it's not some rarity it's not something made up okay this is how the market operates but once we see imagine once you have a trend moving up or down it's very hard to stop imagine a hamster when you were a kid remember those hamster little you buy a little hamster, put it in a cage, have a little wheel in there. Well, that hamster would get on a wheel and it would start pushing it around. It'd be a lot of work. He'd get it started, but then it would start going faster and faster and faster. And he couldn't stop it because once it starts moving, it's very difficult to completely reverse it. And that's why you can see when a trend is ending or when a trend is in trouble because it starts to lose that momentum, that speed that it had as it moved up or down. So when we have this randomness taken out of the market and we have a, a short term ability to set rules, we can then make successful smart trading decisions. See? Now these are live charts we're looking at, but here we go. Let me put my markers on here for you. Push. Ease, push, ease. And what are we expecting? A push. Again, downtrend, push, ease, push, ease. It all ended here. We moved into a very short term uptrend. And then again, push, ease, push, ease. Now, this is the current live chart for the euro US dollar right now. And what do we see? Push, ease, push, ease, push. Now we moved into sideways congested mess. This is where you can't be in the markets. It doesn't make any sense. So what happened, we had a mess of a market and then we saw we, we saw this congestion and then we started seeing push, ease, push, ease, push, ease. We saw a beautiful downtrend. Then we moved into a whole bunch of congested sideways mess. And again, nice deformed downtrend. We only want to trade during these periods. They are the only time that we should ever be in the marketplace. Because this is when the market is exhibiting non-random behavior. And we see this when the market starts making higher highs and higher lows. The more qualified that trend is, the prettier the trend is, the more successful your trade is going to be. And because this happens so often, 
you don't have to just jump in there and randomly trade whenever you see a possible trend or a possible trade. The market's always offering trading opportunities. So if you sit back and wait for the most qualified trading opportunity, you'll only be making high probability trades. And you'll find maybe you'll make a lot less trades. Maybe you won't get excited. Maybe it won't be as thrilling. But ultimately, you'll outlast and stay in the market. So trends are created by powerful underlying economic factors, which may not be all that clear. But the simple pattern creates by the price action responses economic events can often be identified through methods that are easy to learn and apply. Thus, the retail trader has much potential of opportunities as the more experienced analyst if he can control his emotions and behave logically. Now, trend trading is one of the most simplistic basis of trading where you don't have to get overly complicated. You don't have to be an advanced trader and it offers you the easy way to trade. I'm a price action trader. I only trade using basically three things, trends, triangles, I use candlesticks, trends, triangles, and support and resistance. Okay. So to apply this strategy, we must first be aware of the existence of a trend. Without identifying a trend, we would be gambling. And that's not the purpose for Forex. Both fundamental and technical analysts can be employed for identifying a trend, and both of them have their advantages. But to be honest with you, for our type of trading in our type of markets, we can only use technical analysis. It is in general a good idea to use a combination of them for deciding on the trend's character and deciding on our entry and exit points. General observation of market swings is the first point of call in determining if the market is trending. If you do not see a pattern of higher highs, higher lows, or lower lows, lower highs, lower lows, but instead you see sideways price movement with no obvious general ups or down direction to it, then you're probably looking at a range bound market, or one that's simply chopping back and forth. Now, most traders make trend discovery way too difficult. If you take a common sense and patient approach, it's usually fairly obvious if a market is trending or not. Just by looking at the raw price action on the charts, you don't have to make it over complicated. So remember, visual observation is the key. Now, we can do this by identifying the swing lows and the swing highs, which are the, which are the turning points in each one of those waves. And they should be making an easy to explain stepping pattern. If you see the stepping pattern, you don't have to keep on measuring it. Now, the fact is to put, there's a difference between trends and trend line. A trend line has a very specific set of rules. You know, a trend line must never be broken. If it's broken, that trend is over. It must have three points of contact. And it will help you see those steps and those points and those strategic points of price. So keep in mind always, just use your eyeballs, higher highs, higher lows, or lower highs and lower lows. because it will also help us see a change in direction because when we're making a series of higher highs and higher lows and the next low breaks the previous low, that's telling you that there's a change in the direction of the trend or it's telling you more aptly that that trend is in trouble. So finding the market bias or trend is tricky, especially for beginning traders. And most traders will find this to be a sticking point in their trading development. It's okay to understand various trigger point, entry triggers and setups. But if you are trading against the dominant market bias, your probabilities of making money decrease drastically. In other words, 
The trend is your friend and don't try to be a contrarian and trade against the trend. There is always a bias and as a beginner, as a beginning traders, especially you will want, you will all be served to stick with it. Trade the bias, trade the trend. Don't try to pick the bottom or tops. Don't try to say, ah, that uptrend, I'm gonna trade down and I think that uptrend's over, so I'm gonna trade it to go down. Not gonna happen, you won't be successful. Now, there are many technical tools that can signal the phenomena, but there is our equal number of false signals generated by them. Remember that there are only three kinds of trends that can exist, flat, up, or down. Simply take two random points on a chart, draw a moving average on it, and the pattern that arises can be analyzed as a trend. But the trend that we seek to trade is different from random fluctuations. It's different than range patterns. It's different than similar price movements. It's, and we don't need technical indicators for this. In other words, there is some driving conviction behind the price action which allows the traders to easily identify it visually. Now, even though we notice the existence of a trend, we still need technical tools to trade it and time it. Now, if you don't understand how to use technical analysis or technical indicators, technical indicators fall into many categories. There are momentum indicators. Momentum indicators tell you the momentum of the trend that you're looking at. When that trend starts to shift momentum or lose momentum, it may be losing its motion upward or downward. In other words, if I shoot a rocket into the sky, I know it's going to continue up, 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 or a firework in the sky. It's continue up. We know at some point it's going to turn back down to Earth. And if we were to be able to gauge when that mo momentum upward starts to wane, doesn't mean it's turning back to the earth now, but as it starts to wane, we can then calibrate that that upward movement is losing its strength and then it's getting closer and closer to tipping over. We also have technical indicators that are, tell us the speed of the change, how fast the market is moving or the speed of the trend. When that trend starts losing its speed, okay, it's telling us that that trend may not be reversing, but it's not as strong as it was. And when we can notice this ahead of time, we can be forewarned that if we're looking to pick exit the market, that maybe it's getting close to that time. If we're looking to enter the market, maybe it's telling us don't enter now. So you need to learn to identify the different parts of a trend. This will help you avoid overtrading during the choppy consolidation periods and may give you a better chance of profiting when the tra trends make a strong move. So we can see here the trending market to move in spurts, moving in the direction of the trend and installing to take a breather before another leg in that direction trend. Not all trends are obviously now, all trends are not obviously not the same. Now, we have all kinds of waves and, and cycles and all kinds of strategies for this, okay? I don't use any of them. I use simple support and resistance and trend lines. In other words, if we were to look at our chart and we were to have our support and resistance lines on our chart, and use that along with our trend channel or just our visually looking at that trend, we don't need any other indicators to tell us okay, what is happening with that trend. So we would know that the price should bounce off of its trend line. We also know if we have a strong support or resistance line, that will help. When it's bouncing up, we would like to see that price bounce up to its next resistance level, like we analyze here. Very simple here. See how it bounced back up at that point and hit that resistance level and then came back down. And we're looking at it to come back down to this lower, this, this 
support developed by this swing zone as well as the trend line, and we're then predicting it to bounce off and at least go to that next resistance level. Breaks that next resistance level, we would expect it to travel up. And this is how it's creating those swing lows and swing highs. But we can use this information to build ourselves entry and exit points. At what point would we want to enter a trade? Where would we set our stop loss? Okay. Where would we enter the market? Where would we look at, see if the momentum of that market is changing or the speed of, or how would we gauge that that trend is about to end or losing its. So we can see that here in this chart. We can again see it very easily in this chart here. In this chart, we've had done MACD. Now, MACD helps us see the momentum and the speed of that channel and develops, gives us transaction signals that we can use in conjunction. But here is a very simple, this is the current chart. But here you can very simply see what our expectations are in a well-developed trending channel. Now, if it doesn't develop into this trending channel like it hasn't, we haven't wasted anything. We haven't made any decisions. Okay. We haven't done anything, but we wouldn't be looking at taking an uptrend, uh, a buy signal. So these movements that I'm calling eases okay, push up, and then it's really called a retracement. Now, these retraces are when we have the highest potential for a high probability entry within the trend. Often, a market will retrace to approximately the level of its previous swing point before the trend resumes. This is one way that we might want to combine with Fibonacci levels. Okay. We're looking at what level that price will retest or what level that price will retrace to. In uptrend, these swing points are support, and in downtrends, they are resistance. Look at the very first diagram over here to the right, and you'll see what I'm talking about. Now, market timing never works when one is trying to predict reversal points on a technical basis. However, marketing time in the context of a trend, with the purpose of picking the counter trend extremes and using them to enter trade, is necessary and profitable. And there lies the main principle of trend following strategy, recognizing the trend, identifying the counter trend moves and use them to enter a trade in the direction of the trend. Now there are many tools that we can use. The best tools for trend following are supplied by moving averages and simple price charts. Bar charts and candlesticks and many others can be equally useful if employed with moving averages. We can also use our trend following method to set, to set stop loss and take profit orders. Okay. A stop loss can be placed at a short distance above or below the trend line, whether it's provided by a moving average or a simple line drawn on a chart. In our opinion, the trend follower should not realize his profits until he has a good reason to do so. The purpose of this strategy is to focus on underlying price dynamics by stripping out volatility and short-term movements. And there is little logic to realizing profits in response to fluctuations which are irrelevant in the main action of the trend. In other words, during eases, you shouldn't be you should be aware that the push should come to an ease, and that ease is simply an ease and not a time to jump out of the markets and run. So this trading method involves a risk management component that uses three elements: the number of shares or contracts held the current market price and the current market bill, market volatility. Now, forget what I what I would what I do is if I see the markets moving up and I've entered a trade, okay, I would use a risk management component that I would constantly be moving my stop loss up. And each time I would reach a next level of target level, 
I would close a portion of that trade and move my stop loss up closer. So some at a given point, by the time I close out the first half of that trade, I'm already at profit. And I've moved my stop loss up enough that if the market turns against me, I'll get stopped out in no time flat, but stopped out with most of the profit. If it moves up a little bit farther, then I then would close out another portion of my trade and move my stop loss up higher. And I'm constantly using this risk management component to constantly cut my trade as locking in my profits. So another decisive factor in trend following is not the timing of the trade or the indicator, but rather the decision on how much to trade over the course of the trend. And that's important during trend following. You could say, okay, I see this push, this ease, this push, this ease is starting to be a well call. I'm going to enter a trade here. But if it continues up to another push and ease, I'm going to enter an additional trade. Okay. And this is part of your rules. Trend following should be systematic. Price and time are always pivotal. This technique is not based on analysis of fundamental supply and demand factors. So keep in mind to stay calm and follow the trend. There is an old adage that goes, the trend is your friend until it ends. So ultimately in trend following, one line sums it up and that's the trend line. So you can make your trend strategy as difficult or as simple as you want. Like I said, I use a very simplistic chart. I don't really use technical indicators. And I look for only high probability trades and only trade with the trend and always use my support and resistance levels. So trading a trend following system on a single market or only in a few different markets could be suicidal. Because you know what? It's not gonna offer that many opportunities. But if you're a Forex trader and you're, you're watching, because it doesn't matter about the asset you're trading at the moment. You're only looking for assets that are exhibiting certain dynamics on their charts. So you don't care if it's the Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, you don't care if it's the US dollar, Japanese yen. You always, always, always want to look at your economics counter and make sure there's not some economic event about to drive the markets crazy. But then when you say a well-developed trend, that's what you're looking for. You're looking for specific events on a chart. And when those events take place, you're not concerned with the asset. So if you're only looking at Google or Facebook, you know, you may not see a developed trend for months on end. But if you happen to look over at Apple, they might have a beautiful trend. You don't care which one's doing better and what's happening with Tim Cook. You only care. Look at that. I have this well-developed trend. It's offering me a very high probability trading opportunity. Now, the investment universe you choose will help have a much greater impact on tweaking your buying and selling. So choose wisely. You should choose a broad set of markets and avoid too high a concentration in a single sector. In the long run, a healthy balance between all major market sectors yields the best results when you're trading a trend following strategy. So keep in mind, trends develop for a reason, perhaps due to a shift in the economy's fundamentals. Trends show a bias that has existed on the charts. While the future is opaque and unpredictable, the bias may continue. And that is why so many traders look to trade the trends. After all, the future is unknown, and nobody has a crystal ball that will magically foretell tomorrow's price movements. But the fact of the matter is that biases do exist. Trends do take place. And in many cases, the trends may continue. And the types of strategies are endless. Now, keep in mind that you need to adjust for volatility, especially with your stop losses and your take profit points. You need to keep an eye on the economics calendar. You need to know what's going on because Something could 
not ruin that trend, but something could send some volatility in that trend. Something could upset that trend just for a random few minutes. You should be aware of what's happening. But find your strategy, own it, keep it simple, and get it done. And please don't make it overly complicated. You'll be surprised. The easiest strategies will eventually make you the more successful. So keep in mind that we will try to answer all your questions after the class is over. We'll try to send you an email. And thank you very much for joining us and have a great trading week. And if you do have any questions, you can send an email directly to Alvexo support and they will make sure you get an answer. Bye now.